Chapter 12 is called That Treasonous Traitor of Traitors. Alvin rushed out the door in a demented frenzy, followed by the witch and, Al and the Alva's men with drawn swords, leaving the cages with the captured dragon markers openly whispering and then shouting to each other, What happened? They've got the last, last, last thing, but is Hiccup still alive? Or did he die? That treasonous traitor of traitors, snot plate, snot light, betrayed us all. That treasonous traitor of traitors. Snot face, snot light had not left the room with the others. He was still standing in the shadows. Even if you could have seen his face, you would not be able to read it. Boo! Boo! The room reverberated with the sound of shouting, furious dragon markers rattling their cages. And it was dreadful indeed to hear their condemnation. Turncoat! Traitor! Lowest of the low! Disgrace to your tribe! There was shame in Snotpout's flushed face as all around him his former companions cursed his name and howled furious contempt. He would never be trusted again. Oh, I can't help feeling sorry if it's not loud in a funny way. Not even Alvin and the witch trusted him. He had nowhere to go. It was a far greater disgrace for a Viking to lose his honour than to lose his beard. A single tear rolled down Snotlout's cheek. Once upon a lifetime ago, Snotlout had been Gobble the Belch's favourite pupil. Now it was Gobble the Belch's powerful bellow that reverberated around the room in rolling echoes like the honk of an outraged walrus. You have dishonoured the name of Hooligan. You have shamed the good name of your father and of your father's father. Sagas will be told of your ignominy forever. Men roared Gobble. It's not loud. Stood perfectly still and then out loud he said to myself, himself, Hiccup knew that I was going to betray him. He knew. Only two Alphasmen were left in the room. They were kneeling around the trap door, peering down into the sea, shivering and with swords drawn, as if that magical hero, Hiccup the Outcast, might in some frail final act of superhuman sorcery rise up out of the sea and strike them down. With the quickness Gobble would have been proud of in the old days, not that water up behind them, removed the keys from their belts and shoved them into the water. The bellows from the cages of the dragon markers died down. What was the traitor doing? Why had he attacked the Alvinsman? What in Valhalla was going on? Snotlight ran to Gobber's cage and put the key in the lock. What are you doing, Snotlight, you villain? cried the Gregory the Meathead in bewilderment. What does it look like, oh dumbo brain meathead? says Snotlight as the door to Gobber's cage swung open. I'm helping you to escape. Was a murmur of astonishment along the cages. Vikings were strong warriors, tough soldiers, but they're not, they were not all of them quick on the uptake. They might have been taught spying and treachery in their pirate classes, but most of them, to be honest, were not very good at it. What they really liked was to know exactly who their enemies were, pre preferably colour coded with the same helmets or a similar style of furry cloak or something to avoid confusion in the battle. I mean, that is useful. <laughs> so this unexpected move on the part of Snotlout really frolics them. Hang on, said Thackeray the meathead from it head plaintively. I thought you were on the other side. Me too, complained Glavit the Grim. The witch, thank you and everything. Why are you freeing us? What's going on? Look here, it's not loud, reminded Boyley of Basham. Let's be absolutely clear. Are you on that rotter outfit side or not? You won't believe me wherever I say, replied Cotton Stockmouth. You already told me I'm a double crossing worm. Oh. Gobber's cage door was still hanging open. The great giant within, with his arms crossed, refused to, remo to move. I don't accept help from traitors or disgraces to their tribe, roared Gobber furiously. Oh, for Thor's sake, stay if you want to. You always were a stubborn old warthog, mutters not that. He tossed the keys through the door of the nearest cage so that the others could free themselves and ran out of the room. The dragon markers did not waste any further time trying to work out Snotlight's motivation and passed the keys along from cage to cage. To cage. Psychology had never been their strong point, but fighting, however, was their forte. With cries of joy, the freed dragon markers armed themselves with swords, javelins, spears, whatever they could find of in the armoury. And even if Gobber realised it might be better to swallow his pride and join the fray, he left his cage, shaking his head in confusion. Chapter 13 is called Meanwhile Under the Floorboards. And I really will try and read that sooner. Uh, I've been trying to finish a book and I've been running a library campaign, but... I will read that as soon as I can, chapter 13. Meanwhile, under the floorboard.